We just heard how we should all be getting a good night's rest, but often we don't. In fact, news came out this week that on average the British are getting an hour's less sleep than they should every night. So, whilst we've all got busy lives, is there anything else we can do to boost our brains? Well, unless you've been under a rock for the past few years, you may have noticed an increasing obsession with the apps that promise to train your brain with a series of different tasks. These apps or games usually come with a price tag, but are they worth shelling out for? Dr Adam Hampshire from Imperial College London joins me now to explain. So first off, Adam, what are these apps actually trying to improve? Researchers have been working on a variety of approaches to cognitive training that are being applied in these sorts of apps. Now, one of the most popular areas of research focuses on trying to increase what psychologists refer to as working memory capacity. This is essentially how much information a person can actively hold and process in mind. So the idea there is that through exercise this capacity could increase, rather like if you slot more RAM into your computer. Now there are simple and complex variants on this scene. For example, one might be asked to hold sequences of numbers, images or spatial locations in mind across some delay. So I might say to you, for example, repeat the sequence 189 Three, five, seven, four. In more complex working memory training, there may be distracting stimuli or multiple different tasks that a person has to try and perform at the same time. Now, as you practice and get good at the task, you get uh, better at it and the difficulty level is increased. So the idea is it's a little bit like going to a gym and, and upping the level. I've had a go on a couple of these games myself and they're quite fun, but is there any evidence that they actually do anything? Well, that's actually a very controversial question. So a major problem is that there are many poorly validated products out there on the market. Now, the aim with that type of training is to exercise and improve core working memory capacity. But of course, anyone can practice and get good at a specific task. That's just learning. If it's going to be useful, the training really needs to lead to general improvements that extend beyond the training task itself. And for the most part, products that are out there and are available haven't really been validated properly in in that latter respect. Um, I've got a bit of a unique perspective on this uh, question, actually, because I've been involved in research that's shown positive and null findings. For example, a few years back, I was involved in one study in which we tried to cognitively train around about 11,000 individuals using the type of training that was being made commercially available. And we found participants got good at the train task, but they showed no generalized improvements whatsoever. However, subsequently, when we tracked and trained older adults using the same tests, we found that there were generalized improvements. And this data was published just last year. So to my mind, um, that, that study is actually some of the best evidence to date that cognitive training can sometimes have general, generalized sort of benefits. A sort of take home message there really is that certain forms of cognitive training may help certain populations, but that said, training in young healthy adults, it might just not work. But on the, on the other hand, it may be perhaps possible to try and slow memory decline in older adults. That, that area is uh, really very um, active in research at the moment. So to sum up these games, for someone like me, I might do a Sudoku every single day. I'm going to get super, super good at Sudoku, but my memory and my maths and things like that, I'm not going to see an improvement. But you have found this kind of improvement in some select proportions of the population. So should I be spending my time just playing a fun computer game instead? Well, that's actually quite an interesting question in itself. Um, So I've run a number of studies uh, where I've just screened uh, large-scale cohorts from the general population. And funnily enough, I've found that individuals who say they do brain training, presumably with commercial packages, show no advantage whatsoever. Individuals who say they play normal computer games tend to be a little bit better in terms of their working memory and reasoning ability. So, uh, of course, that's, a, that's just a large-scale cross-sectional cohort study. We, we can't infer cause and effect uh, relationships from that type of data. But it's, it's quite interesting. It sort of goes against the zeitgeist that brain training is good and other computer games are perhaps somehow bad. I think it's a promising area of research at any rate. I'm going to use it as an excuse to um, keep playing my computer games. Thanks very much. That was Adam Hampshire from Imperial College London letting us know that when it comes to training your brain, you might need more than an app. Well, now it's time to get your brain round our question of the week. Greg Jackson has been going in circles trying to find an answer to Jonathan's question. 